Bill Gates has close to $200 million worth of this stock and Stanley Druckenmiller has this as his number two position in his portfolio. So what's so special about it? What's so special about Coupang? Well, luckily enough, Coupang just reported their latest quarterly results, so we can go and discuss them. Now the stock is down 8% despite a double beat. As you can see, over the last three years, the stock is still negative. It's still down 11.69%. Of course, now with the after hours action, it's going to be down a little bit more. Year to date, the stock is up above 60%. And year over year, the stock is up 60%. It has a market cap closer now to $45 billion and has a forward P of 75.4 times. Now this year, as you can see right here, EPS expected to be down 43.5% year over year. That's mainly because of Farfetch. But then in fiscal 2025, EPS is expected to accelerate, I mean, completely explodes up 285.8%, followed by another 55.72% growth in fiscal 2026. So yeah, forward PE is high, but as you can see, EPS is expected to grow quite quickly. So that forward PE, that PE should come down. If we look at the current average analyst price target, it sits just 6% higher than the price we're at today. Looking at some other metrics other than Ford PE, we've got here EV to EBITDA of 30.4 times, price to sales in the next 12 months only 1.4 compared to a three-year mean here of 1.6, and then price to free cash flow 32.2 times in the last 12 months. To be honest, it's a very, very powerful company, especially in their home market. So that's where the focus is going. Of course, they're trying to expand in Taiwan as well. Yeah, I know. Tricky, tricky island to be operating in, especially in the near term future. But in their home market, South Korea, they are extremely popular, extremely loved. So that's where the focus is at. And to be honest, they are executing quite well. The stock might not reflect that right now. I mean, it still is up 60% year over year. But as you will see, this company is growing, is becoming more and more powerful, has a market cap close to $50 billion, but I think it could become much, much bigger in the future. Let's discuss the results. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If not, we really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and end up in comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. And before we jump into the results, just to show, this is the stock price, so down significantly, yet revenue and gross profit have continued to go up. Now, if we look at the Stanley Druckenmiller's portfolio, the Duquesne family 13F, we can see that Coupang here is at the number two position. It's 7.88% of the portfolio. Of course, in the coming weeks, the new 13F filing should come out, so... Maybe he bought more, maybe he sold a little bit more. We're going to see. But as of now, this is the last number that we've got. And it's his number two position. Looking at the results, Brad here, stock market nerd, with a great overview. So they beat revenue estimate by 1.8%, beat EBITDA estimate by 29.9%, missed 29.1% gap gross profit margin estimate by 30 basis points. But they did beat gap EPS, it was one cent, they beat it by three cents. Now, management said the following. This quarter, we continued the strong momentum we've seen throughout this year, delivering robust growth in revenues and margins. That's the CFO saying. Our newer offerings and categories like fulfillment and logistics by Coupang, FLC, and Rlux, a new luxury offering, basically Farfetch, are examples of the massive growth opportunities from selections expansion on rocket delivery. We have achieved an important milestone in developing offerings this quarter, reaching near break-even profitability in Farfetch earlier than planned. We remain focused on our relentless pursuit of customer wow and operational excellence. So for the product commerce, they have two segments. So product commerce, net revenue there increased 16% year over year or 20% on a constant currency basis. As for the developing offerings, revenue is up 347%, but of course, that side is still unprofitable here. Segment adjusted EBITDA is actually improving 21% year over year. It's a loss here, still $127 million. Now, this is basically the main revenue overview. So up 27% year over year or 20% excluding Farfetch. 
or up 30% year-over-year on an FX neutral basis, 25% excluding Farfetch. Looking at all the rest here, so we've got net revenue per product commerce active customers, that's up 4% year-over-year, gross profit is up 45% year-over-year, net income is down 30%, the impact of Farfetch, adjusted EBITDA is up 44% year-over-year, earnings per share down 20%, net cash provided by operating activities down 54% year-over-year, and free cash flow is actually negative, $42 million, that's down 108% year-over-year. But as the Farfetch segment does get better and better and more and more profitable, I expect them to be free cash flow positive again. And here they basically show us the Farfetch impact, so net loss of $44 million, diluted earnings per share, a loss of $0.02, cents, adjusted EBITDA, a loss of $2 million. Developing offerings, net revenue $439 million, segment adjusted EBITDA, a loss of $2 million. As for the product commerce active customers, that has increased 11% year over year to now $22.5 million. Now looking at the growth rates, of course, we've seen what revenue growth, what, what the expectations are from management in the coming fiscal years, but what about free cash flow? So free cash flow for 2024 is expected to be $1.085 billion. It's expected to grow to $1.78 billion in fiscal 2025, and then $2.66 billion in fiscal year 2026. Zooming out a little bit, we can see that from Q4 2020, gross profit is up 268.44%. Operating margins have basically peaked here in Q3, Q2 2023, 1.9, 1.8%. .9, then it dropped down a little bit, of course, the negative impact of one, the fulfillment network, plus also Farfetch as well. We can also see that net income was basically very, very negative before. We are turning positive and I expect that to stay for a long, long time. As for gross profit margin, that was 16.6% back in Q4 2020 and we're now closer to 27%. So overall, these things are going in the right direction. By the way, this goes all the way to Q2, not Q3 just yet, but we just went over the Q3 number. So overall, by the way, the small miss I mean, we've seen here the major number. This small miss is on net sales, not on revenue, just on net sales purely. That was $6.14 billion. Market was expecting $6.24 billion. But all the rest, as you've seen, they are doing quite well. Looking at the charts really quick, we can see that on the weekly we're just overbought by a little bit. Now with the dip, we're not going to be overbought anymore. And we are sitting just above the 50-day moving average. So... Yeah, I mean, this is what you want, right? As a long-term shareholder, a good report, stock is down. I mean, that's that's usually the best, the best mix that you want to get. Good report, stock is down, so you can buy more shares of this company. Of course, this is if you like it and if it's in your portfolio. So yeah, overall, that's about it. I can see the value there. Of course, you're going to say, and I'm saying this over and over again, just buy Amazon, just buy Mercado Libre, for example. But I can understand why someone would be interested in Coupang and why someone was interested in Coupang at those prices here below. So overall, that's all I've got for you right now. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much.